Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. I am super excited to bring this guest interview to you today. Today, I have Ermi Hossein, a Bengali by blood and Italian by birth. She works in the financial services industry in Canada, where she is currently residing. She's a self-published author, speaker, blogger, polyglot, and mentor. She's the holder of the CFA Charter, one of the highest designations in the financial industry. And her first book, Discovering Your Identity, is a rebirth from interracial struggle. She's an advocate for women's empowerment and very passionate about teaching and mentoring other girls and women. And she's a part of the organization called Women in Leadership for the Victoria Chapter in Canada as the social media lead where she spreads her message of gender equality and having more women in leadership positions. She enjoys being a promoter of self-investing and personal development. And in her free time, she enjoys reading books and practicing Muay Thai. Ermi is such a beautiful light in this world. And she actually was a light that inspired something within my own business and my own podcast. And you're going to hear about it in this episode. So I am really excited to bring you Ermi. Today, I have Ermi here. She is here to talk with us all things self-improvement. I'm really excited to have her on because it has so much to do with self-transformation and your own prosperity. So I would love to have you introduce yourself and let our listeners know a little bit about you and what you do. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Urmi and I'm based in uh, Montreal. I am a full-time employee in the financial sector, but I do have a lot of side projects and passions. I am a self-published author, blogger, YouTuber, mentor, polyglot, as well as an advocate for women's empowerment. Uh, I am indeed the social media lead for the organization called Women in Leadership, which is based in Canada, and I volunteer for the Victoria chapter. Wow. I love everything what you just said. I love the financial sector. I love the leading the social media. I love what everything you're all about here. So I want to get an idea since you do work in self-improvement and that is such a big thing that, you know, you and I were talking about before of what it is that you do. I want to get an idea of what the transformation was that led you on this path to where you are right now? What did that story look like in the past? And how did that kind of transpire for you? So I would say that the reason, the things that I do right now, they come from a lot of the things that happened to me when I was a kid. I feel like I was always a very driven person, a go-getter, but it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I took action on all of these things. Um, and there was a, a moment in my life that we're talking about maybe five, six, six years ago where I had been working in the sector and I felt like I wasn't doing much besides working. Like I felt like my, my life was just revolving around work, and but I didn't want to be just work. And what happened is back in the days, like I was already doing some things related to self-improvement, like reading books and learning more about, you know, the world. But then I was like, I want to do, I want to take actions on, on some of these things. And my very first step started with the Toastmasters, which is a nonprofit organization where you basically get to practice your public speaking skills. And the reason why I started with that is because I wanted to, I want to deliver a TED Talk eventually. And so it like started it. with, yeah, so I wanted to deliver a TED Talk and I was like, okay, let me start with that. And it was pretty scary at the beginning I have to say I have to say the truth because I was not comfortable with like public speaking but then I was like I have a goal in mind I have to think about the goal forget about the rest which can be like messy and uncomfortable but I learned through time to become comfortable with that so it it really really started with 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 that first step and I do think it has really changed like my whole life afterwards because not only did I learn about public speaking, but I learned about leadership. I learned how to be confident. I learned about self-esteem. I learned about self-worth. And later in years, I never saw myself like being invited to be part of the panel discussion. I did not see myself delivering a workshop. I didn't see myself delivering a, a webinar, but I did not realize that that one action has really changed my whole 
like life afterwards. So now like I do get invited in all of these things. I get, I get invited to do interviews. I get invited to, to, to be part of a panel discussion, to, to deliver a workshop. So it has been like a beautiful transformation because it started from that, me not wanting to do any of this, almost wanting to give up to basically being committed and, and being dedicated towards this. So, so yeah. Yeah. There are so many people who can relate to that. Like you feel like you're working and you're working and you're working, but you don't feel like you're really leaning into your purpose. So there are so many things I have questions on in all of what you just said. But the first thing that I want to ask is you were talking about taking action and you were talking about how you wanted to take action on some of these things that you wanted for yourself. Now, what would be maybe one or three steps for the person who's looking to take action for themselves what would be three kind of like steps or tips that you can share with them to kind of get a fire lit under their butt so that they can start moving on the things that they are looking to do for themselves so it really it really depends on what you want to but for me for instance like before i even took any actions i actually read a couple of books Mm -hmm. i've read a couple of books the first one was this book called i forgot the name but it says something related to self-development which says who says you can't this is what it's called and so i read that book to get some ideas and for me that was the very first step i think like you want to educate yourself and you want to mm -hmm. see like if you can get a little bit of like ideas through books so that's that's been my very very first step the second one was talking to people because I wanted to get a feel like if they could guide me somewhere and if they can help me to find resources. And the third thing it was really to believe in myself. And I think believing in yourself, it's probably the most important step because I think and I do believe that everyone has a potential. Everyone has a hidden talent, but we just didn't take the time to cultivate it. So it's really Yes, you want to take actions, but it's it's like you have to believe in yourself because I think we are good at everything. We can be good at everything, but it's really just believing in the idea that you can do all of these things. So I really had to believe in myself. So there was a lot of like self-affirmation words that I had to repeat to myself and be like, yeah, it's going to be okay. It's going to be great. I'm going to be great. And so it started really with, with those things. So it's really like educating myself, communicating with other people to see, you know, if I can, you know, get some guidance and then just believing in myself. And I always tell people like, I think the very first step in anything that you want to do is believing in you. You need that for, for doing anything you have. You have to believe that you have everything that you need. Yeah, so. I love that. It's so important. And I'm I'm actually finishing out my NLP certification right now. And a lot of what we talk about in the certification, especially when it comes to working with clients, is that your beliefs really truly dictate everything. And it really like whether it's your money, whether it's your relationships, your business, like speaking on stage, writing a book, it really comes down to the power of belief and how much you believe in yourself. So I, this kind of leads me to something that you've brought up, you know, twice now within these last couple of questions. And you bring up the topic of self-worth and like believing in yourself and like kind of valuing yourself. And one of the questions that I have is when you get ready to go up on stage and like talk to, you know, a group or an event, a room full of people, what is something that you do to kind of like hype yourself up? And to get you into that, like, yes, I am worthy to be able to deliver this. Cause that's a really huge deal. I, I personally, I stood up in front of like 999 other people in December and I was like shaking because I, I was like, oh my God, there's so many people. But like when you get up on a stage, I'm sure it's a lot different. So what do you do to really highlight your self-worth and in, in your belief when you're going up on stage? The day before, even the week before, I do a lot mm -hmm. and I write down my thoughts and I keep writing the same sentence, which is, I can do this, I can do this, I can deliver this, this speech and stuff like that. And then the second thing is to do power poses. I don't know if you're familiar with power poses, but they really are helpful. There has been studies around power poses. And if you think about power poses, you have to think a little bit about wonder woman do, do, do you have in mind how she stands like with her open chest 
her hand like her arms on her like side basically mm -hmm. that's how you have to stand and that's a power pose that's pretty much like they call it the wonder woman power pose or something like that and basically you have to do that for two minutes before you deliver a speech and it's supposed to like release some type of chemical that's supposed to like boost you up and that has been help helpful to calm down the nerves whether you deliver a speech in person or even like zoom it's, it's really helpful because it makes you a bit more relaxed and less nervous before your speech and that's something that i've been also like that's one thing that i do and i just don't do it when i have to give a speech but also let's say like in the past when i had to do like job interviews i would always do a power pose because even <laughs> for that it was found that it's really really helpful and power poses really really help you to relax yourself like really i i highly guarantee Wow. Is there anything that is like a power pose besides like the Wonder Woman? I know that for a lot of people, they say they call it, you know, what do they say? It's called flex your chest. So I don't know if that means like kind of like pinching your shoulders back, but like, are there any other power poses that you know of that, you know, you would do in a normal day or before you get out on stage? So I usually do do the one from a Wonder Woman and, and it's because I love Wonder Woman. And so I like mm -hmm. to think of myself as Wonder Woman as well. That's one that I, 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 I do. And that's the only one that I know, actually. That's the only one that I know because I think that was the most effective one that I have learned. The other thing I used to do in, is do a lot of breathing work because I think that also helps to calm down your nerves mm -hmm. and also to go for like a little bit of work because not work, like for a, for a little bit of walk like if you yes. go outside and walk a little bit I think it helps you because you're way way too nervous and you will see you feel better before you like you go and speak with, on, on a stage and also I think when you speak on a stage it's important to like connect to your to the like with the audience like I know if you have like a lot of people it's impossible like if you have 2,000 people it's impossible but if it's a small group of like 30 people it's nice to connect a little bit before you speak I think it helps you to get an idea of who you will be speaking to it gives an idea of like what they like why they're here so you feel a little bit like less nervous I think that's also a very helpful tip as well yeah definitely I love that it's so interesting that you bring up power poses because we don't really recognize how important our body and our body language is to not just other people but even to ourselves like mm -hmm. when we're in that power pose even if we're looking at our reflection in the mirror, we're basically saying to ourselves, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, I've, I'm capable of doing this. I got this. And our communication, I think I have an episode about this in the past. Our communication is a majority of body language. Now, I'm actually kind of curious because you have mentioned that you do YouTube as well. And there's a lot of, I notice it even now as we're on Zoom, like a lot of the camera is really only from like our waist up. So when it comes to incorporating these power poses and also like filming on camera for the creators in our audience, for the entrepreneurs who are also creators in our audience, like what is something that you would recommend for yourself being on camera in terms of like those power poses, belief in yourself when you're getting on camera. I know that there are a couple of people who tune in and listen, who have expressed to me in the past that they feel like they're not original or they're not creative. What would be a couple of, you know, pointers you would give to them? Okay. When it comes to creating, creating content on YouTube, like there's some technical things that you have to like fix, like definitely like, like the area where you're sitting, like you want to be in a space that has a lot of natural light. And they often say like, be in a space where you have like sunlight and stuff like that. Be in a space where you don't have too much of like, not clutter, but you don't have, like it's not too congested on your background. You want to have a neutral background. The way you dress is also very important. So to wear like a color that it's, that it's not blending too much with the background, for instance, that makes you stand out. And also to make eye contact with the audience. And I think it's very, very hard. Because when you're not connecting with the audience, even when you're giving a, like a YouTube, uh, con like creating YouTube videos, stuff like that, you're losing the connection with the audience. And it's, it's fundamental to have that connection. So to make sure that you're looking straight to the camera and, and you're watching your audience live as you're doing a YouTube uh, video. 
And I think it's, like you said, it's very hard to be authentic on like on a YouTube channel, but it's important that you show your personality because the thing is, I think in, a, in this society, we're too busy copying from each other. And unfortunately, like we don't show our most authentic self, but I think what people want to see is someone who's unique and original. So really like talk to the camera as you were talking to a friend rather than imitating another YouTube YouTuber, for instance, because the only way for you to connect and the only way for people to relate to you is when you are showing your most vulnerable self. And I think that's very important, like, because one of the things that I learned through public speaking is about storytelling. So when you, like, before you create like your own like content, you want to create a video also where you tell the audience who you are, why you have started the YouTube ch channel, what is your background story, because it's only this way that people will be will, will be able to relate to you and understand a little bit of your pain and sorrows and make you like like be able to connect easily and I think that's important to build that type of authentic connection to be original and unique so those will be like some of the tips that I have yeah I definitely really appreciate that and love that that's actually something that we were talking about earlier today I was on an, uh, another zoom call and the question that the person who was leading this group asked, um, it was, if you had the courage to share one thing about yourself that nobody else knows about you, what would it be? And when you talk about creating content from this vulnerable place and sharing your story, I almost, it, it just makes me think of that question immediately because that's really the most vulnerable thing that you can do. Now, I'm going to be very, very honest with you right now. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of ask you to help me out right now because I struggle with letting my guard down when it comes to creating content on video. I feel like a lot of the time it has to be kind of like curated and thought out. Like it has to have some kind of general point and purpose as to why I'm showing up and why I'm delivering the message that I'm delivering. And I know that I have these walls that people tell me that I put up when I'm meeting with them, even in person. So what would be one thing that you could tell me right now on this podcast to help me start to bring those walls down and open up with my audience so that they know and they can relate to me and be like, hey, I can totally see that you're you know, a little bit down in the dumps over this or like, hey, I could totally see that I can relate to you on this. What would be one thing that, what would be one thing that I could do to start to open myself up? That's a very good question. I was going to say more like for in-person meetings, what you can do actually. That, that was the tip, like that's the first thing that came to my mind is to basically be curious. Like, you know, like if you're meeting someone for the first time, I think it's like you want to be open to learn from them mm -hmm. and you want to be ver like you want to be cu curious also to 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 ask questions, you know, because I think it just helps you to show that you have a genuine interest towards them. And that also leads them to ask you questions and to know a little bit more about yourself. Okay. That's that's the first thing that came to my mind, like for in-person meetings. Now for ritual stuff, like I think it's it's hard to to create that connection because you're not talking to someone. Like it's you creating solo content, but definitely like not care about people's opinion. Mm -hmm. It's fundamental because if you care about people's opinion you will always be their prisoner and I just learned about this this week as well by like watching a, a YouTube video and often like I think we stop ourselves from doing things or from opening up ourselves to the world because we're just way too worried about what people will think and we're worried about what the closest people to us will think of us we're not worried about strangers we're worried about our closest basically friends or family and I think you have to let go of that you have really have to let go of that because otherwise you will never get the growth that you're meant to uh, like have and so that would be my advice to you is 
let go of people's opinion and judgment and just show up to the world for who you are. Yeah. I love that. I think I need to do more of that. I'm happy that that's the reinforcing message today because that has been that has been really hard and I do interact more often with people who are in my circles and in my communities way way more than like strangers and I feel like through what you've said it kind of highlights this idea that when you meet a stranger they can tell so much more about you because they don't know you and they can yeah. tell so much more about like your honesty, your genuineness, yeah. like because they don't know you and it leads to this more genuine, authentic conversation. So I'm really glad that you pointed that out. So it's actually really funny. We were talking about this before and I want to bring it up now because this is something that you don't know. And I'm so worried. I, I'm so worried. I, there, there seriously is nothing to be worried about. <laughs> I'm so worried. I don't know. What I expect. promise there is nothing to be worried about. So a couple of weeks ago, it was probably about a month ago now. Yes, because today's the 29th. It was exactly one month ago today. I decided to burn everything down. I decided that I was going to delete all of my social media. I deleted everything everything that I possibly had a subscription for, I deleted. And I said to myself, I'm not going to delete my podcast. I'm going to give it a day. And if someone emails in to be a guest, then I'll keep going. And you are the person who emailed in the next morning and you asked me, Hey, can I be a guest on your podcast? So if it wasn't for you, I would not be doing this still. And I want you to know how profound of an impact you've had on me and my business and my creations and my content because I legitimately thought it was going to be impossible to get somebody to be like interested to come in as a guest and you were the first and then it's been like dominoes ever since people have been That's sending cool. in emails yeah it was so incredible and I was like this is going to, I legitimately remember saying to myself, I was like, this is so impossible. There's no way anybody's going to email in by tomorrow morning to be a guest on the podcast. And I remember waking up at 6.01 the next morning and I picked up my phone to turn off the alarm and I saw your email. I was like, okay, I got to keep the podcast. Yes. Oh my God. That's so nice. Well, thank you for sharing. Like, like it makes me happy that I made a change in someone's life as well. And like even like when you told me that you were going to give up and even before you said that I sent you the email, I was like, oh my gosh, no, you cannot give up, you know, like yeah. <laughs> you have to continue doing these things. Like, you know what? I was just talking about someone about this. Like, it's really hard at the beginning because you're like, you you don't see your work being paid off, but you have to keep going on, you know, like it's, it's, it's really about pursuing your passions and like, like going for the things that you love. So like, I'm glad that you did not give up. Like, I know that I like somehow stopped you from this, but like, you have to, you you really have to believe in yourself. Like, and somehow like it will pay off eventually. Like, honestly, and I'm happy that you're having all these people like, like coming to you and asking to be a guest. I think, I think it, it's honestly, I'm glad that you, that you're doing this. Like, well, really. I'm glad that you emailed in. I was like, <laughs> I was so ready to just be like, nope, we're done. And this would have been yeah, uh, probably the probably the third or fourth time that I would have like stopped like in the middle of doing something cold turkey. And then I was like, no, 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 no. Don't don't lose your mind. <laughs> like be a little rational about this. And I was like, okay, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna set this as the goal, the intention. And if somebody emails in, then I'm gonna keep going. And you emailed in. I was like, well, the universe is telling me that I have to keep going and that I have to keep connecting yes. with people. So, yes. so I just wanted to share that with you on this episode because I, that's why I was like, I want you to be genuinely surprised and like genuinely excited because that's, that's, that's a huge thing. Like whether people realize it or not, they are creating impact on other people. And they don't even, like some of us don't even know it. And so that's why I wanted to tell you on the episode specifically, because I want you to know it. And I want other people to know that like you and the self-improvement, the self-belief work that you were connecting over, I was like, 
yes, this has to happen on the podcast. It has to happen. It must. (laughs) Well, thank you. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about where we can connect with you, where we can check out what's going on in your world. Tell us what is going on in your world. Let us know all the things. Yes, if you want to connect with me, I have a blog. It's called myways.ca. I also have a YouTube ch- well, YouTube channel called Urmi Hossain. I have a LinkedIn profile called Urmi Hossain. I have an Instagram account called Urma Neo. And if people want to purchase my book or my ebooks, they're available on Amazon. So my so my first self-published book is called Discovering Your Identity, a Rebirth from Interracial Struggle. And once you find that book and you like, click on my name, you can also find all, all, all of my ebooks. Like I have I have one about public speaking and podcasting. I have one about personal branding. So people can find about my work uh, through that as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for sharing all the ways that we can connect with you. Is there any one last thing that you want to leave the audience with today after all of what we've talked about? Yes. And I think you probably will like it too, because it's an advice that I got from my closest friends when I had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And and she told me that everything you want to do in life or every decision that you make in life, always take a decision that will bring you closer to your truest self. And I I needed that when I had to make a tough decision. I think often we really have a hard time making a decision and we do it for the wrong reasons. But I think it's important that we live our life in the most authentic and the most sincere way and everything that we do like we want to make sure that we do it so that we can get closer to who we are meant to be so yeah. that would be my advice i love that that is so important thank you so so much for coming on to the podcast and we will talk to you all very soon <laughs>